Delicious Real Deal Ribolita. It's a hearty, healthy vegetable soup originating from the Tuscan hills around Florence, Italy, and about the most delicious soup in the entire world. Your soup life is about to change. Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Today we're making genuine Ribolita, step by step, with a recipe that would make an Italian grandmother proud. Now, Ribolita is not fast food. It's real deal, old school Tuscan cooking. It takes some time and some love to cook properly, and there are many steps involved. But this is an authentic dish, and the time and effort are well worth it. To help with the recipe, notice the fancy new footer graphics at the bottom of the screen. These will indicate each step of the recipe and will correspond exactly with the steps in the written recipe that is included in the video description below the video on YouTube and on the website at UncleScottsKitchen.com. Each step in the recipe will be shown in the video so you can see precisely what to do and you can use the on-screen graphics to easily navigate and find your place if you need to pause or skip around. Now what exactly is Ribolita? Let's start with a very quick overview and then we'll get right into how to make it. Ribolita is a thick, hearty soup, great for winter time and characterized by slow-cooked white cannellini beans. Lachinato kale, yes I said kale, don't panic, it's gonna be delicious and crusty bread mixed right in with the soup. It's completely vegetarian and only full of good things. Lots of fresh veggies, good bread, and quality extra virgin olive oil. Now historically, in the kitchens on estates in the Tuscan hills around Florence, Italy, cooks would keep a big pot of soup going day after day. Each day they'd eat some, then add more ingredients, and the following day they would reboil the previous day's soup. Hence the name. The word ribolita literally means reboiled in Italian. So for a real deal ribolita, you will do most of the heavy cooking the day before you actually want to serve it. Then reboil the soup on the following day when you finally get to eat. Now let's cook. <laughs> Equipment needed. Start out with standard kitchen stuff you should already have. Knives, cutting boards, measuring spoons and cups, spatula, ladle, bowls, and a colander or strainer. A handheld mixer or a food mill is a nice to have, but not absolutely necessary. As you'll be moving some beans and water back and forth and sweating a few veggies, it's nice to have two big cooking pots available. At least one with a thick, wide, heavy bottom. A booty pan, as it were. I like to use two Dutch ovens, but you can get by with a large soup or stock pot and a big bowl or two. Ingredients. A good rule of thumb here, put healthy fresh ingredients in and healthy delicious food will arrive. We'll need one pound of dried white cannellini beans, two cups or so. Now I know what you're thinking, can I use canned beans? For real deal Ribolita, the answer is no. You really, really need to use dried beans and cook them slowly and properly, and we use the cooking water as well. Now I get it that some people are very busy and will use canned beans anyway but your Ribolita won't be nearly as good as the real deal we're making here. If you do use canned beans, just promise to use dried the next time you make it. Now for the following ingredients, don't worry about being too precise. If you're off by a half a carrot or a handful of potatoes, no big deal. We're making soup, not launching a rocket. So we're gonna need a few carrots, a few stalks of celery, an onion, a couple of russet potatoes, one bunch of Lachinato kale, also called Tuscan kale, black kale, or cavolo nero in Italian. Now a side note here, cavolo in Italian means cabbage and cavallo means horse. In southern Italy, know what you're ordering, as sometimes you might see both on the same menu. You need one Savoy cabbage, you'll need a can of Italian plum tomatoes, or a couple of tablespoons of good tomato paste, or if you really want to go with no processed ingredients, a few real plum aroma tomatoes. You'll need some good quality extra virgin olive oil. And for the bread, we're gonna put in our soup, a loaf of pane toscano, Tuscan bread, if you can find it. But a good rustic white French bread, like a crusty French loaf will do just fine. Now don't use sourdough or whole wheat as they have so much flavor that they could affect the taste of the soup and avoid anything with seeds or nuts. A simple rustic white French loaf is best. And water. Now I've seen some Americanized versions of Ribolita recipes that call for chicken stock. Don't use chicken stock. Now let's cook. Step one, brine your beans. The most difficult part of this recipe is getting the dried cannellini beans to cook properly. 
We want them to soften and cook to a nice tender texture, but not go mushy or explode, all without taking hours and hours of boiling and headaches. The way to achieve this is to brine your beans in salt water the day before you want to cook them. So on day one, dissolve three tablespoons of salt in one gallon of water. Any container that won't be affected by salt water should do just fine. Sort your beans just to make sure they all look okay, then put them in the brine water, stir, cover, and leave them out overnight. Do not skip this step. If you don't brine your beans overnight, you are in for a world of bean hurt. And that's it for step one and day one. Easy enough, and we're off and running. Step two, drain and rinse the beans. Discard the soaking liquid. Since I am going to cook the beans in the Dutch oven where they now reside, I put a colander over a bowl, scoop out the beans, then rinse and wash the Dutch oven so that it's ready to go. I add eight cups of water, then I rinse the beans carefully and drain them and add them back to the pot. You want the beans to be covered by at least two inches of water or so, so I will add a little more here and get up to about 12 cups total. Lots of this boils away and concentrates, so don't overly obsess with the exact amount here. You can add more later if need be. Step three, cook the beans. Now we need to bring this up to a boil. Add half a teaspoon of salt to your water. If using a stainless steel pot, wait until the water is hot to add the salt, else you can cause pitting in your pot. And nobody wants that. But the beans boil partially covered for 45 minutes. In this 45 minutes of bean cooking time, we will have other things to do, which we'll get to in a minute. But let's look ahead to what will happen with the beans. If your beans are creating lots of foam, you can reduce your boil a little bit, turn the heat down, and or skim off the foam. Now after 45 minutes of cooking, start checking a test bean every five minutes or so. Depending on the minerals in your water, your altitude, the age of the beans, and who knows what else, cooking these beans can take from 45 minutes to an hour and a half or longer. Had we not brined the beans, however, it might take four or five hours. If, after 45 minutes, the beans are still really hard, you can add one quarter teaspoon of baking soda to the water. This will help soften the beans. If you add more, it will affect things negatively. Now keep boiling the beans until they are tender but not mushy and exploded. Check them regularly. When they are done, simply leave them covered and remove the whole pot from the heat. Do not drain them. We need the cooking water to make the base of our soup. Step four, prepare your sofrito veggies. Okay, now let's back up. After you set the beans on to boil, you have at least 45 minutes of free time. In this time, you need to wash, peel, and chop the three carrots, three or four celery hearts, and an onion. I like to end up with roughly the same amounts of each. These will become our sofrito, which is the Italian equivalent to a mirepoix. We'll sweat and slowly cook these in olive oil once the beans are done. Now remember, our beans are concurrently cooking. We don't know exactly how long they will take, so just prep your sofrito veggies now, but don't start cooking them until the beans are done. As for size, I like the slices to be 3 eighths of an inch or so wide. You want to be able to see these in the final soup, particularly the orange or the carrots. But don't go with giant chunks as you might for a stew, else they won't sweat and soften properly. Step five, slice your bread. We're still in the 45 minute bean cooking window. Go ahead and cut your bread into thin slices. Put these slices on a wire rack on a baking sheet and put them in a warm oven and dry them out until they are slightly crunchy. Don't toast them or turn them brown, just dry them out. We want them to be like dry little sponges that are gonna soak up our soup later on. Step six, cook the sofrito. Once the beans are done, remove them from the heat and set them aside, covered and do not drain. To your second Dutch oven or booty pan, add one half cup of good extra virgin olive oil and bring it up to heat on a low flame, a fuoco basso, as the Italians might say. Add your sofrito veggies. And here I want to really emphasize that low and slow is the way to go. We do not want to brown these veggies. I repeat, do not brown these veggies. We want to sweat them and soften them. Use low heat so that they are only barely sizzling. Stir often. And here is a great place to enhance your cooking skills. Taste these veggies every few minutes and note how they slowly go from crunchy and earthy to soft and sweet just like me. This usually takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Now, how do you know when they are ready? When they are soft, sweet, and almost buttery. 
We don't want anything crunchy in our finished ribolita. Step seven, puree half of the beans. We're still in the 20 minutes of sofrito softening and now we have lots to do, so get ready to shake a leg. We'll turn our attention back to the pot of cooked beans. What we want to do is retain some of the beans in whole form for texture and appearance while blending the others up in their cooking water to provide a thick, hearty base for our soup. So take half of the beans out of the pot, along with some of the cooking water to cover them and keep them from drying out, and set them aside. To what's left in the pot, I take a handheld mixer and blend everything up until smooth. No big chunks should be left. Now add the remaining whole beans and water back to the pot. This is the opposite of the way an Italian grandmother might do this. In Italy, they often use a pasta verdura, which is a hand crank food mill. They'll remove some beans, grind them into a paste, and then add them back to the pot of cooking water. If you have neither utensil, you can remove some of the beans and mash them with a fork or the back of a spoon and create your own thick paste that way, then add it back to the pot. Step eight, cube your potatoes and prepare the tomatoes. You should have a couple of minutes left here to peel and cube your two russet potatoes. Due to some horrible design flaw or technical problem with my camera, I didn't get footage of cutting these up. Actually, I forgot to press the record button. Anyway, peel and cube the two potatoes and get them ready to add. Three quarters of an inch or smaller cubes are good. And prepare the tomatoes. Open your can of tomatoes or wash and prepare your fresh tomatoes or get your tablespoon or two of tomato paste ready. I like to chop up three or four or so of the canned tomatoes without too much juice. The more tomato you add, whether in paste or pieces, the redder your soup will be. So don't go crazy here. We just want a few tomatoes for a little color without making this a red tomatoey soup. Step nine, combine everything so far. Well, that was a busy 20 minutes. At this point, the sofrito should be about ready. So let's return the bean pot to the flame and get it boiling again. Add your potatoes, carefully add the sofrito, then add your tomato and stir. A bonus note here about cooking dried beans. Make sure your beans are properly cooked before you add the tomato. Acidic ingredients can interfere with the cooking of the beans, so make sure they are already cooked before they come into contact with the tomatoes. Now partially cover and bring this to a boil. We'll want to let this boil for 15 minutes or so until the potatoes soften. Step 10, prepare and add your kale and cabbage. So we have a 15 minute chunk of time here while we wait for the potatoes to cook. That gives us time to give a good rinse to the lachinado kale and savoy cabbage and get them chopped and ready to add. For the kale, it's important to remove the tough middle rib. We don't want anything tough or crunchy in our final ribolita. So get that removed, then chop the rest into one or two inch pieces, whatever size makes you happy. I use pretty much the whole standard supermarket size bunch, probably two to three cups chopped, and you don't have to be too precise here. For the Savoy cabbage, you need to remove the tough center. Remove any grody outer leaves, cut it in half, remove the tough center, then chop it up. Remember your soup has to fit on a spoon, so fairly small chunks are nice here. After our 15 minutes are up, we can add the kale and savoy cabbage. Add it up to the rim. Don't worry, it's going to wilt down and a lot of this is just going to disappear into the soup. Step 11, adjust and cook. Now is a good time to add more water if you need. Stir often and be really attentive so that the soup doesn't stick. Que non si attacca, as the Italians might say, so it doesn't attach itself. Now I added some more water, maybe a little too much, but really no problem as it's going to evaporate and cook down anyway. At this point, the ribolita should still be a liquid. Most of the thickness will come later when we add the bread. Cook it for another 45 minutes to an hour. Now here is where you can adjust your salt and pepper to taste. Tip, add salt in small amounts. You've spent hours and hours cooking this ribolita so far, and you don't want to mess it up by oversalting it right near the finish line. Step 12, prepare your bread pot and add the soup. We still have work to do while the soup cooks. After it's cooked 40 minutes or so, we need to get our bread pot ready. I like to clean a little as I go, and I already cleaned that second Dutch oven that previously held our sofrito. If you haven't already, go ahead and clean and dry yours now. In the bottom of the Dutch oven, put a little bit of oil. Then line the bottom of the pan with a layer of dry, crunchy bread. You can drizzle a little olive oil on the bread if you like. On top of this, ladle in a layer of soup. 
And look, isn't our soup beautiful so far? Look at the colors, reds, greens, oranges, yellows. The scent is incredible. We're getting close. Next, add another layer of bread. Just a little bit of olive oil and then another layer of soup. Keep repeating until the pot is full. Make sure you add enough liquid as the dry bread will really absorb a lot. Now cover this pot. We're gonna let this rest overnight. Now you'll want to allow this to cool significantly before sticking it in your fridge, else there will be a bacteria festival in your mayonnaise. So let it cool on the counter for a couple of hours, then refrigerate overnight. Now to the remaining soup, I added the rest of my bread. And let's be honest, even though we know this isn't Ribolita quite yet, we're all gonna try a little test bowl now. And the test bowl is already delicious. Tomorrow it will be even better but we still have work to do. This is not Ribolita yet. Step 13, reboil. Okay, day three has arrived and we can see the finish line. Our bread soup has rested overnight, its flavors have come together, and now it's time to reboil it to officially turn it into Ribolita. Remove your Dutch oven from the fridge and take a look. The soup should be very nice and thick and you may not even see any liquid at all. That is just what we want. Now this full Dutch oven weighs about a ton and it can be a little bit difficult to reheat the entire Dutch oven at once. If you do so, add a little bit of water and heat it very slowly as it can easily scorch on the bottom. But a much better thing to do is remove several portions of soup, add them to a little water and olive oil in a saucepan, and bring this mixture up to a boil. And you see those little bubbles? You know what that means? It's reboiled and you have officially made yourself an authentic, real deal Ribolita. Ladle yourself a bowl, add a little olive oil on top, some salt and pepper, and while it seems like a lot of work, and it is, when you take that first bite, you'll know that it was all worth it. This is authentic, genuine Tuscan cooking with a history that goes back to the Middle Ages. It's vegetarian, it's healthy, and it's the most delicious soup in the whole world. Real deal Ribolita. And I think an Italian grandmother might even be proud. Enjoy. Now we have our Facebook and Twitter pages up and going now, so please check those out. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Here are some other videos you might like, and please leave questions, comments, and feedback. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.